In today's short presentation, I'd like to talk to you about some of the hidden gems in the clarinet repertoire. We're, we're mostly, I'm sure, familiar with most of the, the works written by all these great characters over, over the years, but there are some pieces that, that are not that well known. Uh, I, I've, over the years, for some reason or another, and I'm going to explain why in some cases, have got to know these particular pieces I'm going to talk about, and, and I'd just like to uh, encourage you to, to have a look at them. Um, we're going to start um, with a piece I love playing. It's by a Jewish Canadian composer, Srul Irving Glick, um, and it's called Sweet Hebraic Hebrew Sweet. Uh, he actually worked for the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. His father was a cantor, singer of religious music, and his brother, in fact, was a clarinetist, uh, hence the Sweet Hebraic. Uh, the piece was written in the in the 1960s, and I've recorded some movements. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the recording in a minute. Um, and so I'm just going to play you some excerpts from, from these movements. I've recorded two. Uh, the first is the first movement, which is called a cantorial chant. Um, and the second is called, second I've, I've recorded, is the actually the last movement, the circle dance. Um, it's very exciting music um and i, I did it's one interesting memory in my mind actually is that uh, when when i was at the academy uh, i used to go out a lot um, and, and do little concerts in residential homes and, and i just bought a whole pile of music um to play shorter pieces and this was one of them this is where i i first met this piece and it was always terribly popular um and now i play it regularly six movements but we're going to hear just two moves, but let me just show you where we recorded it. This happened between the lockdowns, uh, and I went over to this church in Butler's Marston, which is in Warwickshire, um, and a friend of mine, Lynn Arnold, a wonderful pianist, we often do concerts together, um, recorded these, but I have to tell you, this picture is not that day. It was freezing cold, um, and the piano had not been tuned for about six months. Uh, and so, uh, and I'm not making excuses, but it was rather difficult to play in tune. So uh, do forgive me for, for any little infelicitations in that area. Anyway, here are these two movements, excerpt from the Srul Urban Glick Suite Hebraic. move on to a piece that was first introduced to me by the great Carl Leister. Um, this is Carl actually talking to me at my breakfast table. Um, he, he came and did some master classes in my house uh, a number of times and I still keep in touch. I first met Carl when I was a student at the academy. He used to come do master classes and he introduced me to this piece by Schumann, not written for the clarinet. Um, it's originally this piece was um, a, written for pedal piano. Um, and there is an old pedal piano, a piano literally that had pedals rather like an organ. And other composers, Liszt, um, Al Canguno, they all wrote for the pedal piano. Uh, these are some pieces arranged by Howard Ferguson. Now, you probably will know Howard Ferguson for his four short pieces for the clarinet, but this is not those at all. These are three duos that he arranged, and they are terrific. Um, 
here's uh, the, a bit of the movement. I'm just, again, just going to give you a little excerpt, but a wonderful piece, wonderful Schumann. And, and Carl loves it. Carl's recorded these pieces. Um, really important, I think, as, as on the side of the repertoire, but really lovely to play. Again, when I was at the Academy, uh, most of my lessons were with the wonderful John Davis, but I did have a couple of lessons with Georgina de Bray, who particularly specialised in French music. And it was she who first introduced me to Lefebvre. Um, uh, she had already done, I think, an edition of three of the sonatas. Um, and uh, since then, uh, John and I have done an edition, you may know this edition, of five, um, and we did actually did two others separately. Um, Lefebvre sonatas, and they are delightful. Um, they're not especially testing technically. Um, we got hold of original copies in the uh, Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. I think I actually went over to Paris to see these copies. Um, and um, although they're written, I think they were written about 1800 or 1801, um, they still use the Baroque tradition of the clarinet tune and a bass line, rather like Baroque music with the um, with the uh, continuo part. And I've got a friend of mine, David Rowland, who is um, director of music at Christ Church in Cambridge, specialist in French music to realise the, uh, the cello part as piano parts. Um, and so we have these five lovely sonatas now. Um, and I'm just going to play you a little bit. There will be a little bit now of sonata number five. You can see on the left, the original. Uh, and on the right, David's realisation, a really great piece. Uh, moving swiftly on, um, I wonder whether you know the sonatas by Max Rager, wonderful pieces, introduced to me by John Davis when I was at the Academy. Um, he wrote three altogether, uh, and the, the Opus 49, the earliest set, uh, they were inspired by Brahms sonatas um, and written a little while later. Um, but they are wonderful. They are such wonderful pieces. Um, they are complex works. Um, the piano parts are really rather, well, they're, they're quite hard to play, very contrapuntal, um, but the, the, the harmonic language is, is fantastic. And, and just even just looking at those first two pages, you can see how much detail uh, Rega puts in, in terms of phrasing and, and harmonic nuance. Anyway, um, I'm just going to play you uh, uh, just a little extract from the first movement of this wonderful sonata. Richardson, um, maybe not a composer you would have heard of, he actually has written some lovely clarinet pieces. Uh, one of my favourite is Roundelay, um, you may know. Uh, he was responsible for the first and second book of oboe solos. He was married to Janet Craxton in that picture. Um, 
John Davis, my teacher then, was asked to do the first and second book of clarinet solos. Uh, and Faber at the time asked Alan Richardson to contribute some pieces for it. In fact, basically, write all the pieces, all the pieces in the first and second book of oboe solos, a lot of them are by um, Alan Richardson. Um, but John decided not to use Alan Richardson's pieces and they were not used, a whole load of them, and never got published. And, and a couple of years ago, Faber found these in a drawer somewhere and sent them to me and said, you know, would I like to publish them? And they knew about my Queen's Temple publications. And I said, absolutely. So, um, uh, and, and they, they make up these, these wonderful three books, these three sets of, of uh, postcards, because all the pieces have a kind of geographical feel about them, or titles, in fact. So here they are, and they are absolutely lovely pieces. Uh, book one and two are quite, quite, well, I don't like using the word easy, but they're quite elementary. Book three um, has some wonderful recital pieces. Uh, and I'm just going to give you a little flavour of one of them. Um, Lundy Island. It's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Next, I'd like to just mention um, Visions, and forgive me, uh, as it's one of my pieces, um, but uh, some interesting pieces here, uh, and I, I wrote them when I was uh, head of wind at, at Stowe, and I wrote each one, there are five of them, for a different pupil, a bit like the Nielsen Curto, trying to encapsulate personality in music. Um, but they're rather fun pieces, uh, and interesting to play, um, contemporary, but not in a contemporary style at all. Here's the beginning of number three. Now for my last piece. It's by a Hungarian composer and professor of composition, Zoras Warchi. I'm not sure whether my pronunciation is particularly good. Um, Dances from Korond, and another great piece. I, I love this piece. Um, Korond is, is a province in Hungary. Um, it's, it's uh, actually, I think it may be just across the border in Romania, um, possibly, in that bit of Transylvania where Dracula came from. So I think there's a rather a good backstory here. Um, anyway, I'm just going to, they're, they're wonderful. It's a really good, it's, it's you know, one, one of these really showy pieces. So I'd just like to finish with a little uh, excerpt from the Dorascuoci dances from Corond. Thank you very much for listening to this little presentation. Mm -hmm. 